Louise? I'm good, thank you. I'm so excited to be speaking to you on World Cleanup Day. Me too. Yeah. So, Lily, why don't you start off by sharing a little bit about who you are? Of course. My name is Lily. I'm 12 years old. I live in the Netherlands and I'm an Aries. Oh, you're an Aries? And I'm, yes, and I'm the founder of my initiative, Lily's Classic Pickup. Amazing. And so when did you start Lily's Classic Pickup? When was your, at the start of your plastic journey? It was way back in the years of 2015 when we were walking and all of a sudden we saw so much plastic and it was discarded everywhere. But this is a time when sort of new to the Dutch language and I didn't exactly know how to count in Dutch. So we decided it would be a great way to count all the pieces of plastic that we found. And as an estimate, we were probably walking for at least 10 or 15 minutes and the amount of plastic we counted was 91 pieces of plastic in that short amount of time. And of course, we picked it up. And while uh, me and my grandpa, I just sometimes like to call him my abuelo, um, uh, while we were picking it up, he told me that anything that falls on the ground or someone makes way into the ocean might take a day, week, month, or even a whole year, but it'll still make it into the ocean and into the plastic sleep. So that was kind of how it started. Wow. And so I imagine, you know, so many people see plastic, but like, what was what was the thing that you think made you act on it? Like, what was that stepping stone? Because all of us walk past plastic, we may see it, we may put it in, you know, the closest bin, but like, what motivated you to really start this whole, um, you know, Lily Plastic Pickup, as well as this Green Heart journey and everything else that you're doing and advocating for? Well, kind of, well, sort of the planet and nature has always been a part of my family because my grandpa, he lived in Port Isaac, which is a small village in the, in the, in the north of Cork, in the north of Cornwall. So he was always very close with the birds and the coast and just, and just the ocean in general. So, and, and he's also a geologist and he traveled everywhere, mainly in Africa, South America and, um, and, uh, in some other parts of in, and some other parts of the, the world, and he would always tell me these stories about about the animals he encountered and some and some of the amazing things about cultures that he's seen and some other stuff. So that was kind of what motivated me because it's all about the animals and it's all for the planet. Amazing. And so you've done so many things. I mean, just in June you came and spoke at the United Nations World Oceans Day, but I know you've also spoken at. EU Parliament, etc. Can you share a little bit more about, like, what are you most proud of in the work that you do? Mm, that's actually quite a good question. I'm probably very proud of of picking up um, of picking up more than a hundred thousand pieces of plastic since I started. I'm very proud of that. Amazing. And do you do this alone? Do you do this with friends and families, communities? How? I actually pick up plastic any chance I get. Yeah. Um, but even if even if I don't have the right equipment, I'll still pick it up. But I always wash my hands afterwards. <laughs> and have you seen during COVID? You know, have you seen how there may be more plastic consumption or less? I mean, I was starting to see in New York, for example, I see so many like masks and gloves um, <laughs> are like out of the trash bins. It's crazy. Like, I'd love to hear a little bit more about. <laughs> What, you, what you're seeing and that's changing? Well, well, it's sort of the same, not the usual, but we have seen a lot more masks, a lot more masks and gloves, because my friend Danny, his initiative is the Let's Clippers, he, uh, he was, uh, uh, just today, he just went to the gym and he um, picked up and he um, and he saw so much plastic and of course he picked it up and he and he said that he picked up 43 masks only uh, one was walking home with his mom. Yeah, so I've definitely seen uh, um, a very much increased amount of masks and gloves ever since um, ever since COVID-19 started to spread yeah and I mean, one great tip is if people are using disposable masks, it's actually to cut off the strings because that can get caught, um, it, you know, in animals, etc. Sure. So, I know you're a big yeah. animal, so I just put that out there. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So you've just started this Green Heart journey. Can you share a little bit more about it and how it started? 
Well, sort of how it started was during one of my school strikes. So this lady on her motorcycle, she read out one of my signs, and it was written in Dutch, and it said, a uh, school striking for the planet. And then when she parked her motorcycle, she said, you're going to get a fine. And then right after she said that, she just exploded with comments like, this is an evil go back to school, I'm calling the police, and like that. But I'm on your car, that's what she was saying to you? But, um, yeah, uh, yes, she wrote, yeah, she, um, yeah, she read it out loud, and then she just started saying all those things that we read, but one of the people that eventually found her down, and then we actually found out that when she was a child, she actually was striking for Andy, but, um, uh, but no one supported her, and the school gave her a fine, so she sort of lost a connection with nature, and always sort of held that hatred against it. And that was how I got of, and that is sort of how I thought of the idea of the green heart. So the green heart is a human bond with nature, but I have seen that over the, throughout history, humanity has kind of lost this bond. But I still believe, still admit that that children still have it. They need to find, they need to find a way just how to share it with the world. Great. So how are you? So you're going to be using that as a hashtag. I know. What other things are you going to be doing around that? Hmm. Probably showing, uh, probably showing lots of positive things about um uh, about how to um about how to bring out your green heart, or to show that you are actually doing good in nature. Amazing. Well, any help you need there, we'd love to help you um get there. So okay. And if you had to share a tip with grown ups um around passing pollution or wanted to share a piece of information, what would that be? It would probably, I would probably say is to support the youth, to always support people trying to do something for the planet, is to always support them. That was what they would definitely say. Because it's support and positivity that can, um, that can really help children when they're, when they're, when they're going to make a big change. That's always very good. Yeah, and you're part of this very inspiring group of you to driving this change. So apart from you, like who are some of your closest friends that are also advocating for the environment that you think have amazing green hearts that you maybe you want to share a little bit about what they're doing and how they're doing it? Um, uh, well, definitely Ocean Global, of course. They have, <laughs> they're very awesome, of course. And then, um, hmm, I'm not, uh, well, probably a lot of actors. Um, a lot of activists are doing that. They are doing all. Uh, they're all out there to plan it. That was that would uh, what I would say because if I could name some of them, we were probably here for a very long time. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. And what do you think some of the easiest ways to shift our behavior? So I think a lot of the time when we talk around plastic pollution, it's like shifting behavior at an individual level and looking at how we're currently using it. But what are some of your suggestions there? Well, I would probably say is to, um, it's, for example, if you're listening to this live stream, is to go to your kitchen and open one of the cupboards. Then you can see how much plastic is in there and try to think of other ways how you can, other ways how you can replace that material with, uh, how you can replace plastic with another material. And the ones that I'd recommend are metal, bamboo, or, um, or, or, or cotton. Or those kinds of materials are very good because I even use them for uh, for most of my reusable bags and well reusable bottles and reusable drawers. And hopefully, I get to talk about these more uh, more later. Amazing! Do you have some of your favorite items you want to show us? I saw you just showed up a little bit of a straw there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um. Uh. Well, this one is definitely one of my favorites because I use it a lot. I usually use it for pink water, and you can just put. Almost not anything in water, um, be it tea, bubble tea, anything. And also one of my favorite things to use are the are these things. And sometimes I always do like a little infomercial about these so people know more about it. And I don't have the entire set, but it but it's just uh, but it's just a funny point how I like to say it. And the first thing you have here is the spork. <laughs> You can take it anywhere, so you can do no slippery plastic. The sport, bamboo sport included. That, that's how I like to introduce it. I 
love it. Cool. Hey, wait, was it back? Was it like a fork on one side and then a spoon on the other? Is it like a hybrid? Oh, that's like, so cool. So you it down with it every day and yeah, it makes it easy. Very, very cool. That's true. I. So, what did Lily pick up? Like, what are some of your dreams around it? Oh, could you please repeat that question? I can hear it. Sorry about that. Um, so, as we're slowly starting to wrap up, I was wondering, like, what is, what's next for you and the lead plastics pick up? Like, what are some of your dreams of growing it into something? I know it's been amazing and inspiring people to just pick up trash and think about what they're using. Um, we just spoke about reusables, but, you know, mm. it's big. I know the green heart is a part of that, but what else? Um, hmm. Well, I would probably say that um, the, one of the biggest goals is just to have people will be a little bit more mindful of nature and just to see that the earth, that it's actually a living thing that gives us more than we need, that more than we think. Because it's, so that we just don't, so that at the end of the day, we just don't think of it as a credit card with no spending limit or a coat that we can just wear one from guard. So something that we can that we um that we can pass down from generation to generation, and can actually care for it like a living thing, like everyone's cared for us. That's what that's definitely what I want to do with my future. It's just have people be a little bit more mindful of it. Amazing, and I think you know today's world well cleanup, and I think it's a perfect opportunity for anyone that's listening to start and look at you know what are all the things that you're using in your life. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Where are you putting the, your money towards? You know, what type of brands are you supporting? Um, and thinking about the five R's as a, an amazing kind of in oh, yeah, of right into that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. as you are going outside today and you see any litter anywhere, go pick it up, lead by example, inspire other people to do so. Um, you know, if you're by a park or a beach, go and go and do the take three, um, which is see, take, pick up three pieces of plastic, and hopefully that will have that ping pong effect too. Mm -hmm. But also, if you're going to pick up plastic, I also, I also recommend to always wash your hands afterwards if you don't have any gloves or any of the or any of the little things. Yep, great, yeah. amazing. Well, thank you, Lily, for sharing. Well, thank the you so much. Yeah, and. Um, excited so so excited to see how the green heart journey is going to evolve and everything that you're doing we're just in awe so thank you so much good work okay bye happy welcome bye have a great day i'm just saying this bye